Download and install Google Earth Pro. Then run it and carefully follow all steps. We need to configure some options before starting. So first of all, go to Tools and click on Options. In the 3D View tab, change the latitude and longitude to decimal degrees. Set the units of measure to meters, kilometers, and set the anti-aliasing to high. Move to the Navigation tab and select Do not automatically tilt while zooming. Now press Apply and restart the application for the changes to take effect. Type the name of your location in the search field. When you confirm the search, Google Earth automatically adds a pin to the map, but you don't need it, so press the X button to remove it. Zoom in only by using the zoom slider, because if you use the mouse wheel, the map will zoom pointing to the mouse position, thus losing the central point. Reach the maximum zoom level according to your needs. Before saving the map, you need to take note of a couple of map information. The map altitude and the coordinates of the place. These are necessary if you want to create the animation starting from the Earth. The coordinates can be read from the right bottom side of the screen, but as you can notice, they change when you move the cursor. Don't worry, just place the cursor outside of the map and you'll be sure that the coordinates are the correct latitude and longitude values of the center of the map. So note down the coordinates and the I altitude. Now press the Save button. But before confirming it, change the resolution to 3840 by 2160 and untick all elements in the map options. Finally press the Save Image button. Choose a folder and call the image 1. Being very careful not to move the map, use the zoom slider to zoom out of the map. Then take note of the camera altitude in this position before saving the image. We recommend you not to use the mouse wheel to perform the zooming out because this would mean using the cursor position as a map center. Press the Save button and call the map 2. Again, zoom out. Always remember to take note of the altitude in Save Image 3. Repeat this task in order to save six maps images from different altitudes. Okay, you could ask, how do I know how much I should zoom out? And the answer is, it doesn't matter. Because as you will see, when you'll type the map's altitude in the After Effects project, it will automatically calculate the map's distance to perfectly merge them. Just keep in mind that you have to save six map images altogether, and that it is better to grab maps closer one to the other. In the close view, like in this case, in fact, as you can notice, the altitude of the maps gradually increases. Another useful piece of advice, if you plan to use the Earth Zoom animation starting from the Earth, save a far map as we did in this tutorial, because it will be very useful when the map animation will be merged with the globe. And very important, do not save maps from Google Earth that shows the roundness of the Earth. Great! You're ready to open the Earth Zoom project. Now, import the maps and place each one of the corresponding composition. So the image that you called 1 will be placed in the composition called 1, the map 2 in the composition 2, and so on and so forth. It's time to copy the altitude values. So open the Map Altitude Composition and type the corresponding altitude values. Keep in mind that the unit of measure is kilometers. If the map unit is in meters, like in this example, you have to convert and type the value in kilometers. The next step is the map credits attribution. Google Maps, like all the other map service providers, requires you to credit their maps. Since the attribution text is integrated in the map and the animation hides this text, it is necessary to manually type the attribution. Open the Maps Credits Here composition and copy the text of each map in the corresponding text field. If you have a permission from Google to use the maps without the maps attribution, or simply you don't want to use the credit under your own responsibility, you can skip this step. The main configuration is concluded. Now you can choose whether to use a simple map zoom or an earth zoom. Let's start with the map zoom. 
The speed of the animation is controlled by these start and end markers. So the closer the markers, the faster the animation. Furthermore, you can set the animation start, moving the start marker forward. The control layer has an effect called map settings, with many options. The start altitude and end altitude set the starting and ending altitude points of the animation. Obviously, if you want to create a reverse animation from close to far, you just need to set a higher value in the start altitude control and a lower value in the end altitude control. These two properties have the possibility to add keyframes. So for example, you can easily create an animation where the camera zooms in and after a few seconds, zooms out. To do that, just add two keyframes to the end altitude property and modify the value as shown in this example. Use the Clouds Amount slider to increase or decrease the amount of the clouds. Ticking the Camera Rotation checkbox, the camera rotates around the map. The rotation amount is established by the template and can't be changed. Enable the Camera Shake and set its amount to stimulate a handy camera. Finally, there's the Show Maps Credits control. It is active by default and it's used to enable or disable the map's credits. When the camera reaches your point of interest, you can add a pin, a callout, or both. Let's start with the pin. Enable the pin layer and move it in the timeline to sync the pin animation start time. If you also want to have a pin animation out, you just need to set the layer out point and the pin will automatically scale down. Now go to the effect controls window of the pin layer and if you want to see the available pin styles included in this project, tick on the show available pin styles. Select pin from the Pin Style drop-down menu and, if needed, customize its colors. Now untick the checkbox. If you want to use a callout, you have to open the composition called Callouts Catalog. Make a RAM preview to see all callouts animation and make your choice. So for example, if you like the callout number 3, double-click on the corresponding button to open the callout composition. Here you can replace the title and the subtitle, and through the control layer, you can adjust some callout properties, like the colors or the box size. Now go back to the map zoom composition and select the callout layer. In the callout settings, simply choose the callout that you've just modified. In this case, it's callout number 3. The animation of the callout, like the pin, starts from the in point of the layer and disappears with the same zoom out animation at the out point. Just a brief explanation on how the image callout works. Let's suppose you used an image callout like the image callout 3. As explained in the quick guide, import the image into the composition, position, and scale it to cover the gray shape. Then move the image layer below the image mat layer and set the track mat to alpha mat.
If you're looking for a more complex animation where you can zoom starting from the Earth, open the Earth Zoom Composition. There's a control layer here as well, but within a different effect called Earth Zoom Settings. Let's talk about this effect. Before zooming to your desired point, you can decide to start from a different place. It could be useful to simulate a slow Earth rotation, or show the distance between two points. Do you remember when you stored the coordinates of the map? Now these data are necessary to calculate the right rotation of the Earth. Copy the latitude and longitude values in the end coordinates values. If you keep the start coordinates with default values, the Earth rotates from the coordinates 0, 0 to the end coordinates that you set. So, if you want to keep the Earth still, just copy your coordinates and the start coordinates. If you want to create a slow Earth rotation movement, just slightly change the longitude value. How can you change the rotation duration or the camera position with respect to the Earth? Open the Animation Settings group. As you can see, during the Earth rotation, the camera zooms in. This movement can be set adjusting the start and end camera zoom values. Even in this case, if you don't want an Earth camera zoom, just use the same value for both properties. The rotation speed is determined by the rotation duration. The default value is 3 seconds. But if you want a slower rotation, just increase its time. This animation is made of two separated animations, the Earth zoom and the map zoom. In order to merge the camera zoom of the Earth with the camera zoom of the map, you have to set two different zoom durations. There's no guarantee that these values are identical because the different Earth and map altitudes affect the speed of the final animation. So you have to find the right Earth and map zoom duration values by yourself. In order to get a smoother animation without sudden speed changes, as shown in this example, Before switching from the Earth Zoom to the Map Zoom, the animation has a fast crossfade transition. Move the time indicator to this point. In order to improve how the animation merge, you can adjust the Earth Max Zoom amount to make the final view of the Earth animation look like the first map of the further static map. The Map Setting group includes all properties that we previously saw in the Map Zoom settings, in the Map Zoom composition, and they must be used to control the Earth map animation. Finally, you can control the appearance of the Earth. For example, you can change the angle of the sun that automatically affect the night light's areas, set the opacity of the clouds on the globe, show the universe or remove it to place your own background, and enable or disable the lights and the dark areas.